Hello, welcome to the channel and thanks for watching. And in this video, I'm going to take you through how to make transfers or decals look awesome on Warhammer figures and do it while painting up Canis Rex. Now, if you're not interested in seeing Canis Rex being painted, skip to about the three minute 12 mark. That's when I start using the decals and you can skip there. If you are interested, carry on watching. So Canis Rex, first thing I've mounted him on a base made from a mold from the Triumph of St. Catherine model. So just to blend it into my sister battle army, if you watch that on the channel, you'll, you'll know what I mean. Uh, and then I've sprayed him black and then a lead belcher spray over the top. And you can see here, I've done him in two sub-assemblies. I don't often do sub-assemblies on models, but the Knights are a big model and it's just easy to break it down into a figure case for storage doing that. Now, a lot of people get intimidated by these big models because, you know, it's an expensive piece of kit you're buying. Uh, what if I'm going to ruin a model, etc. Now, for me, actually, painting big models like knights and things, it's absolutely fine for beginners or if you've never done anything like this before. Uh, a big model is actually quite forgiving in what you do, especially if you're doing a colour scheme like Canis that's very, very silver focused because you can save a lot of time with the sprays like we're doing here. So we're just going through the details. This is a Retributor armor we're using from Games Workshop just to go around all that brass edging. Um, this shot here was a still that I dropped onto my Instagram account just saying, oh, I'm painting up Kane's Rex finally. So if you fancy checking that out, uh, I'll try and put the descriptions down below for my Instagram, that kind of thing. And obviously, if you're enjoying what you're watching, like, comment, subscribe, all that kind of YouTube jazz. So there's a lot of details on Kane's Rex that you want to be using in a brass kind of colour. I'm using Retributor from Games Workshop. I'll drop all the paints I use in the description below. So you can follow it exactly or just, you know, take it as inspiration. There is obviously an official colour scheme for Canis Rex. I do vary it slightly and I'll try and comment when I do. So this is now using an off-white colour across the uh, depth of the model. Don't go straight for white. I mean, you can do, but obviously my opinion is don't because you go straight to white, you leave yourself very little um, area to highlight up from and you'll have to do layer upon layer upon layer. You can see here on the shoulder pad, this is the second layer of white I'm putting on here. And again, this is an off-white colour. So I, I've done two layers of white on every white part of this model. If you were doing it with uh, pure white, you might need three or four to get the same sort of effect. Um, and again, thin layers, so you're not blocking detail. Don't go slapping it on really thick. Now I'm moving on to a bone white colour for using on the scrolls um, that are in various areas across the model. You could use the same off-white colour across everywhere and that's something I have done on the models before and then relied on the highlighting stages to really make the visual difference but I'm not going to do a great deal of highlighting on this model and I'll explain why kind of later so I want to start the differentiation now rather than leaving it till later. So the red layer is obviously the very prominent colour on Canis Rex. Now on his right shin officially you don't do this pad red but I wanted to because I thought it would look nice on the model so again even though you're painting an official color scheme of a model you don't have to necessarily follow the whole thing through now here's something you wouldn't have to do if you'd sprayed from black I'm now going around and putting black detailing on the pipes and kind of the joins between the uh, thigh I suppose you'd call it and and the waistline uh, I don't do massive amounts just enough to start adding some visual difference in but I do paint the chains um, on the shield on his carapace and on the hand and things so now we're on to the meat of the model so this is the Vallejo decal system gloss varnish decal fix and decal softener now I'm going to use this to show through video but I will also tell you how you can get the similar effect without necessarily buying this equipment and again with Canis Rex you've got a series of places where you're supposed to put the decals because you're full instructions and you get a really nice decal sheet fairly well explained as to what you need to kind of cut out and do now what we're using first is a gloss varnish and we're painting this onto the areas where the decals are going to sit. Now we're using below here but for years and years and years I've used the Games Workshop gloss varnish that used to come in the pot. And what this does is it gives a better surface for the transfers or decals to stick to and it smooths them out a little bit better. So this is something I've done for years with a paint on um, varnish. Remember to use a not very good brush to do this with, a brush you don't mind sacrificing. Now when you paint it on, but you can slather it on in large areas, it do doesn't really matter, but do try and just put it on uh, a smaller area as possible that you know is going to cover the decal. So just measure up whether the you know how big the decal is and just try and put it on the minimum amount of area you need to because you we're going to try and cover this up later. The more you put on, uh, the more the later cover up might need to be done. So if you haven't got a paint on gloss varnish, you could spray some varnish on there, but you'd cover up a lot of the model, obviously doing the same thing with a gloss and want to, again, minimise it. Now, you don't have to do this gloss varnish stage, but each stage that you skip doing this just means you're going to get not quite as nice an effect on the model. You'll get very close, but the more of the stages you can do, uh, the better the decal is going to look. So you leave the varnish to dry 
and like you can see on the leg there that section i'm showing you where this decal is going to go that we're going to demonstrate the varnish has dried it's got a slight sheen to it but nothing too significant now when you cut the decals out you always use a really sharp hobby knife and cut it as close to the decal as possible without actually hitting um, where the decal is and you'll see that from that kind of sheen now what we're using now is a Vallejo decal fix. Now all this is, is a liquefied version, I think, of the, the glue that's already on the decal. So it just gives you a little bit of extra uh, fixability, if that's even a word, um, to go on there. Now, if you don't use this, you know, there's no particular matter. This doesn't have a huge impact on the model, but it does just make that decal a little bit easier to stick. But for years and years, I never used this, so it was never a, a particular issue. And I got some very uh, incredibly similar results, but it definitely adds a little bit to how easy it is to fix. So soak your decal and transfer into water. And when it's been in there for a while, you'll see it's loose on the piece of paper when you pick it up. Now, how you get the transfer of decal onto the model, it's entirely up to yourself. You can use your finger just to slide it on. You can do whatever. I find the easiest way of doing it is with a paintbrush. Now, you can also use cocktail sticks or whatever. I've seen that and I've used that with certain ones. It's quite easy, but I find paintbrushes in your fingers are just the easiest way. Try not to touch it too often with your fingers though, because you've got the risk of it then sticking to your finger and not coming up, but a wet paintbrush definitely seems to work. And now it's just trial and error, um, maneuver it into position. You'll get gradually used to, to doing what you're doing. Um, and you'll be, you know, the more you do it, the sort of more practice and experience you will get. So you see me use my finger there and then back to the brush. Now I'm using a, a synthetic brush here like anything synthetic brushes are a little bit tougher to stab into places so i do move to then using a natural fiber brush to sort of push in the edges and all i'm doing here is using that natural fiber brush to push onto the transfer and push any air bubbles that are under there out as much as possible and to move as much of the water out as possible as well i'm not pushing too hard and again this is the advantage using a, a sort of sable hair brush is that you can Put less pressure on so here it is again i uh, dropped this one onto my instagram when i was showing how my progress was going so check my instagram out you know double plug again um you will see on there there is still a bit of shine on there because we've still got the gloss varnish underneath and if you look very carefully you can see a couple of bubbles um and cracks kind of in that decal so showing you you there again now this is the stage that again is relatively new to me i've used it a few times and this is a decal softener now what this does in theory is that those bumped up areas of the decal you paint this on and the uh, solvent that's in the decal softener goes to work and, and sort of half melts half forms uh, those bumps and ridges and makes it smoother around the model you see there at the end look very very little bumps and things left now if you've got bends and cracks in a transfer and you don't want to use decal softener you can use a really really sharp hobby knife just slice that crack press it down and a technique that a friend of mine uses all the time is just then sprays it with varnish really really close because the propellant in there has got that similar sort of solvent in and can melt the transfer i don't personally like that effect but you can try that as well so here we are after that has now dried so we've left it for a chunk of time and i've then sprayed it with a matte varnish and you can see when we're showing here the shine that was on the transfers and around that panel from the gloss varnish has now gone because uh, you know we've used the matte varnish to then dull that down so if it's any spray matte varnish you want to use i've used games workshops munitorum varnish and now we're back onto the paint scheme um this is a sepia ink wash that i use on a lot of my models and we're just whacking that over the entire model including over all the transfers and from this point on really if we've got this process right these transfers now just need to be treated as though they were painted on so again here's a still shot i dropped on the instagram feed just showing what it's like after this wash and they don't look like transfers so now at this point we've done, done a decent enough job that the seams and gaps around that transfer paper is not showing as a transfer so they look you know blended into the model and now really like i've said you've just got to treat the model as though you've painted the entirety of it so these highlight layers and these next steps within the model are exactly the same as you would do if you were painting your model in any case so uh, if you've watched a lot of my videos i tend to do an ink wash and then i'll go back with the original colors i've already used and do a highlight layer to try and you know hit the areas where the sun is is going to strike so we're showing you here i've uh, just shown you the retributor armor second layer we're now doing a layer of the metal color and treating these transfers just like i painted like i've said multiple times um going around the aquila on the leg there being very careful then hitting those leg panels now in a lot of my videos i will talk about doing two or three layers of a gradually brighter color onto the armor panels or whatever to make it look like lights hitting etc one of the beautiful things about painting knights and big models is they're very forgiving about that 
the actual, the big enough that the light gives you highlights for you. So now we're going to do some weathering on the transfer, and this is the exciting part. That's just a piece of foam taken off the inside of a figure case when I've customised the case layout. Pinch a bit off, leave it quite knobbly and bumpy. Stab it into the paint, if you've seen there. Take most of it off onto the paper, so you want very, very little left. We're not putting massive deposits of silver down here. We just literally want little specks to come off that brush, brush the foam. So we're stabbing the foam very gently onto the model. And hopefully you can see tiny, tiny bits of that paint are coming off the foam, depositing over the top of the transfer to make it look weathered and bashed in. And this is something that's on the actual official Canish Rex model, so I wanted to replicate that effect. And you can see there, it makes it look like this has been painted onto the model and now has been bashed and scratched and um, is wearing away the paintwork that's gone on. So all we're doing is we're treating this decal or transfer exactly as though it was painted on. And we do the same process on the shields, the writing, etc. So we're taking that bone white colour here. Exactly, if you watch my painting techniques, this is no different. And we're then just working on that transfer area. Then moving on, so I'm painting the uh, wolf head that's on the armour panel. So it's interesting. Obviously, the wolf head is the symbol of Canis Rex. We're showing you painted here, and we'll show you painting the transfer later on. So we're painting around the transfer here with the pure white on the shoulder. Again, treating it as though we'd painted these black lines on, avoiding going onto them as much as humanly possible, and just blending it in um, and not going into the corners or the edges or the cracks because we want some detail to show through um, there and you want to leave the shadowing in the corners just exactly like you're painting any other model. But we're painting now over where that transfer join is. And actually, I couldn't even see it when I was painting this because the varnish layer has done such a good job. Um, and again, the wash has done a good job as well there. So you can see he used a very small brush there to go in between the areas of the transfer and then uh, wiping a bit of it off with water because I'd uh, spread onto the black. So again, as though you would treat a normal paint skin. Now, if you do go over too much and you do make too many mistakes, what I'm doing here is taking a little bit of black and going back over the chain link areas and painting the black stronger. So um, to correct those mistakes where I've smoothed those that are white. So Again, I keep repeating myself, but you've got to just treat it as a painting. Now, the head here, you've seen me do the head on the shoulder plate, and I'm doing exactly the same now on the transfer head so that it looks like the molded on one. So it looks like I've painted these on because you'll see the brush strokes, uh, you'll see the shading, and you'll see the levels you know, that, that make it look like the one we've done on his uh, shoulder shield. So, you know, and that's what we're going for. These things look like. I've got the skill to paint, a, you know, a wolf head on a shoulder. So great thing to do, great thing to use. So the Vallejo system, as I said before, you don't have to use the entire Vallejo system, but it gives you the principles and ideas about what you're going for, uh, about how to make the transfers look natural. And it's the painting side afterwards that's the more important part. So you can see, hopefully you like the effect of the model. It looks like I've done a lot of highlights, a lot of those kind of things, but it's not. The model is so big that the actual natural light does a lot of the shading and highlighting and those things for you. So don't be afraid to, to paint the night, have a go have a play i would suggest experiment with transfers on a smaller model first you get lots of spare transfers on this sheet so you can just have a go at using a transfer that's not exactly going to make it onto your night um and then you know you'll get your method and you'll understand what you're doing so here's some final shots of canis rex so i hope you enjoyed it i particularly enjoyed it um like comment subscribe all that youtube jazz check out some of the videos on the channel if you want to see canis rex being used uh, i'm mean, it's a big game i published last week four and a half thousand points that canis rex was involved in so go check that out and hopefully i will see you in another video soon